Hi everybody, Roy here. Uh, I wanted to do a, like a, a review or a catch-up show from the last discussion we had about um, how, do you, how do we define, how I define and, and share with you putting perennial plant communities together based on what we had talked about earlier, the percentages and relating each percentage of each plant to growth rate and growth habit. And I know you hear this from me frequently, but I think it's very important for me to frequently say it because that to me it has such a value of how to put young children, young plants together to become adults and share resources and grow together in a healthy way. And as they reach maturity in three to five years to suppress weed growth. As we are, we are smart enough to outsmart weeds based on how they live and how they grow. Once we understand you know, when a lot of the weed seeds germinate based on soil temperature, sunlight time of year. So there's a lot to it. But I thought, you know what, let's review what I've done because I reviewed it. And I just wanted to start with, I usually have two questions. Uh, today I just have one. And, uh, oh, and by the way, I thought I'd fill this in. Usually in the winter we have more shows here at Simple. I love the place and I actually got a, a wonderful scone before I came in here. They're savory scones with bacon and onion and they're are outrageously good. But the weather got so warm, it was the warmest February in recorded history, I actually uncovered all our perennials that were on the ground. I took the microfoam and plastic off before they started to grow underneath the plastic. And we did that three weeks ago. And I've never uncovered in late February in 42 years. So I've been really active. Our crew is back. We're uh, cutting back and uh, mulch mowing gardens and trimming back gardens and leaving all the debris in the garden, we haul nothing away. Oh, and by the way, you guys just caught me again, I use the word debris. I, we don't leave plant debris because that's a negative term. Debris is a negative term. And I caught myself just now, we use leaf and stem fall. That seems more positive. So we, when we cut back plants, we leave the leaf and stem fall in the garden. And the plants are basically living as they've lived since they appeared on earth. In, in their own leaf and stem fall that falls to the earth every uh, early spring, late winter. So again, I, I just wanted to share, usually we would do more shows and we're kind of catching up. Now it's a beautiful day outside, but fortunately it's only 35 degrees. It's not 65, <laughs> so things are slowing down. And the bonus part is set Friday, we're having a three inch snowstorm, so I can't wait. I'm looking so forward to having three inches of snow come down, hopefully some high winds to blow the snow around. So it, we can get back to our pace of gardening uh, as it once was, but I know it will never be that way again. So we're basically living in a culture of adaptability. The, the change that we have to make is more adapting to the conditions, the weather patterns and weather conditions. And by thoughtfully planting I think we can put plants in a situation they can contribute to a healthy future for all of us. So that's, that's my little input right now I wanted to share with you. So back to my two questions. So the one that really drove me to review and to do the, this show, to look back from the last show and incorporate it into some aspects I'd like to discuss with you now. Uh, one of my favorite singers is John Gorka. And, um, he kind of puts me in a good mood, and sometimes a thoughtful mood with his music. And one of it, my favorite songs he has, it's called, If Not Now, When? And when I look at my approach to who I am and what I do, especially growing plants and coming to know plants so I can put them in social systems of living where they can thrive and relate that system of living to who's going to care, love, and nurture them. The song starts with, if not us, then who? If not now, then when? And if not here, then where? I'm gonna repeat that again, because that moves me so much. If not us, then who? If not now, then when? And if not here, then where? So that relates in my way of looking at who I am, is how do I take actions? How do I think about what my next project or understanding or coming to know a moment is and how do I take an action so I can deal and start something right now that might take one week to 
be successful, two months to be successful, or 10 years to be successful, or maybe 20 years. So I really like thinking about that song and it helps get me off of my treadmill of doing the same thing over and over. So I thought I'd share that with you. And I have one question after that John Gorka moment. So the question I came up with, does reviewing a process or a project take too much time? Is it just too kind? You know, I don't need to review that again. I got to get going. So sometimes when I mention action, an action isn't just to get going to the next thing. An action is reviewing the project or process to see where you might do something a little more um, intuitive or structurally more sound or make better choices. Um, or does reviewing something does it provide for a better, more thoughtful outcome? And I think all of you out there, that's kind of what you'd like to have. You'd like to have a good, solid, thoughtful outcome with anything you're doing. And that engages in reviewing. So what, what I'd like to do is go over the grids, show you what I've reviewed, what I'm changing, and add that extra 100 feet that I didn't put in the show we did last week. And by the way, I brought this with. Uh, this is an image. It's actually a painting a client gave me. I don't know who the artist is. He gave me this painting because these are the colors, the shades and tones of color he wants in his shade garden. He'd like to see that in his shade. I'm not duplicating the painting. I can't do that. But I can put percentages of tones of color into the garden, mostly by foliage that can work together to give him this effect, this kind of earthy brown, gray, and olive green. So uh, this helps me a lot when I look at impressionistic paintings. I can kind of get a sense of uh, tonal changes of color it, it, and color combinations to put in at what percentage. And for me, it helps me because sometimes I could sit here and stare at the drawing board and the next thing I know, I'm, I'm watching gun smoke. I have no idea what to do. So when I get the uh, Impressionist painters, I go through um, some material like Pierre Bonnard. I really like Pierre Bonnard because of his, the way he uses tonal changes of softer colors. They're not very, uh, they're not very harsh, so it, it makes me feel comfortable even going through his paintings. Again, that just gives me a good beginning. So I thought I'd share that with you. So. Um, let's get on to the grid and the review of the grid and show you what I kind of came up with to, to make some changes and then how I can expand it the extra 100 feet on some of the plants off our last procedure I didn't use percentage-wise. So this is what I came up with last week and I have to show you last week or last time we did this I didn't have the symbols. I was putting them down without relating who they're with. I caught myself on this show. I've got everything lined up so I can remember what symbols match each other. So that was one thing is match your symbols to your plants. Don't get caught off guard like I did and forget what symbol relates to each plant and then put the wrong symbol down on your, on your, uh, starting, your starting grid comp composition. Okay, so we had 200 square feet we actually, like I mentioned in the last show, we're only planting 171 square feet because we're not planting the edges here. And when I reviewed what I had planted before, I, I looked at the uh, A, the Cecilaria, the short grass, and I think I had too little drifting through there to create a kind of a grout between the patterns. So I had these spaces I decided to fill in on 15 inch centers with more cecilaria. So that way it flows through the pattern. And I just needed two more. I left them blank so I could show you what I was missing. So I have cecilaria autumnalis flowing through this pattern. And I wanted to say the percentages you saw on the, um, the handout or exercise I did the last show, you don't have to use those exact plants. You can pick any other plant you want out. You could do only three plants as long as you understand their growth rate and growth habit. 
and how 33%, 33%, 33% might work together or based on growth rate and growth habit or kind of the textural elements you want, 33% of one plant might be too much because they get a little larger and taller and might overwhelm the other 66% you're using. And I didn't want to seem complicated with that statement, but you shift your percentages based on the growth rate, growth habit, and how the plants interact in relationship to each other to create the design elements you like. But it could be two plants, it could be three, it could be eight. And then you'll see if you go farther than eight, you might have a planting that's too complex. It might look too, too busy. But again, that's your interpretation of it. That's why you're drawing it on the grid paper. So you can look at it right now and say, you know what, is this too busy? Do I have too much going on here? And maybe then you, you re remove a few plants and quiet it all down. You, you take out two or three and make the initial design quieter knowing, what do you know then? You can enhance it in two or three years when you see how everything fills in. You can bring other elements in to enhance your, your planting in two or three years. Okay, so what I'm doing now, I'm gonna move this over and here's my additional 100 square feet and I'm looking on my list, well, what, what didn't I use? I didn't use Parthenium. I had some extra Echinacea purpurea alba. I had a few Calmagras uh, coreopsis left over, and I've got Spra. I've got almost everything here on the Cesslaria. I have plants left over. So what I decided I want to do, I want this next hundred square feet to not be quite as busy as this. I want to go from from the Salvia River through here, and I've got the uh, Sprabulus H in groups here and here. I think, yeah, two, two groups of Sprabulus and here. So I want to carry the groups of Sprabulus through. I want that to be my support system. So I, since I have Sprabulus here, I'm going to take the uh, Salvia. So I'll put Salvia here and here and here. And with the Sprabulus here, I'm gonna carry a salvia in this gap I have right here, because now I'm connecting this edge to this edge. So I'm having one continuous garden. So I'm putting a salvia here. And I'm gonna put another Echinacea purpurea right here. So I'll have the white drifting into the salvia. Okay, that's my momentum. So I have a salvia, so I think I'm gonna take the salvia, I'm gonna make it a little bigger. I'm gonna put another one here right here, and I'm gonna put another Echinacea alba here, and I have to play off the Vernonia. I have right here the Letterman eye, so I got a Vernonia here. So how do I wanna do that? I, I think I have Coreopsis left. So I have a Coreopsis here, I'm gonna put a Coreopsis here, going into this one, and I'm gonna put another Coreopsis here, and another one probably right here, and then I'm going to put one more cone flower right here. But now that I've just done that, I, did, I, I don't want it there. I thought, no, I got too many. See, I, it's just spontaneous thinking. So I, I looked at, well, I got too many here. I put it down, it was like a knee-jerk reaction just to put more white. But I think what I want to put in there, I, I want to put, um, Coreopsis. I think I want to put a Sparabolus at mound right here. So my name, H. So I want the mounding to go from here to here. So I got H, H, H. I'm going to put them a little closer. I've got them too far apart. H. I got five in here. All right, now I've got the Sparabolus, the Sparabolus. I think I need one more group but I'm not quite sure where it goes yet because I want to have continuity going through here. So I've got, the, I've got the salvia, and then I've got, I'm gonna use Cesslaria. I've got the Cesslaria here, here, here. I had 42 of them, I believe. And we'll carry Cesslaria here and here. 
Okay, so I've got the, the salvia, cesslaria, coreopsis, spirobolis. Now I'm going to go this way. I want a stream. Again, I'm just thinking my stream going this way. So what am I going to do to have the stream this way? I'm going to put another vernonia right here. And with the vernonia, I'm going to put parthenium. I haven't used parthenium yet, so I'm going to put a P here, a P here. And I think I want to put another parthenium here and here at the edge. So I got four. I think I'll go with parthenium here. So, so what I'm doing is I've taken parthenium, a vertical structural plant with the large white flowers. I'm going to end the garden with the white, the vertical, and I think I'm going to end it heavy. And by heavy, I'm going to put another vernonia here, another vernonia here, and another vernonia here. So I got, okay, that, that's bulking it up. Well, what did I, what am I going to do? I'm pausing for a minute. Is that what I really want? No. I'm erasing that vernonia. I'm going to put it right here at the end of the garden. And I'm going to put Sporobolus H here, here. I'm going to move the Parthenium up a little bit. See how easy this is? And you know what? I haven't bought one plant or, or wasted any money buying more plants than I need. I just keep erasing and changing. And it's that, it's that constant review. So I'll move it up here and I'll put another. So I, now I've got Sporobolus going this way through here. Well, I like that. I like that river of Sporobolus. I follow it through here, through here. And I look, where do I have? You know what? I don't have any Sporobolus here. So it kind of ends here. I've got it all down here. So the Sporobolus, I, I'm reviewing it. I got it coming through here, up this way, down this way, and ending here. That's kind of cool. I like the river. I'm okay with that. So down here below the uh, um, Coreopsis, I'm going to go in with a cloud of Calamintha. So I've got Calamintha, I've got that as a circle. I'm just going to do a whole large group of Calamintha. Finish the whole area off. So I've got this cloud of Calamintha here, and I've got Calamintha here, Calamintha here, and Calamintha here. So when I review it, okay, I've got, I've got, I've got some musical notes going here. I like the rhythm I've created. It's living in harmony at the end because I've got more structural plants grouped together. So I'm, I'm okay, I think, musically. I like the rhythm. Here, here, here. I've got the lower cesslaria here, a river of cesslaria, low, weaving through the center. I've got some over here. I'm kind of ending with cesslaria. And then I have to finish the center. I have coreopsis and white coneflower left. So I'm going to put some coreopsis here. Fronting the Vernonia, the Vernonia is going to be a, almost like a shrub, large mounding plant, dense foliage blooming later. And then the Coreopsis is going to be right here, fronting that. I got them on about 15 in centers. And then I'm going to put um, Echinacea alba. I got it grouped through here. I'm going to put that, I don't want to put it here. I was, almost did that. I almost put it here but then have too much white. I got the Parthenium white flowers, and got Echinacea alba. So for right now, I feel that's too, too much white, even though the flowers contrast each other. And I have the gold cone, the cone of the Echinacea is kind of a golden, uh, dark gold color. So I think I'm just gonna put that over here at the end for now. And again, I have, this isn't something I can't erase. See the eraser here? I can jump on that in a heartbeat get rid of that. So I'm, but for now, I got it right here. I've got the Vernonia there. I'm going to put another Corey. I'm going to finish it with Coreopsis. So I got a, a large block, a large block. I've got the Sporobolus in here, Vernonia, Parthenium. So I think my support system for the center, yeah, I'm going to finish with Sporobolus. I'm going to put this in Sporobolus, this in Sporobolus. And how do I feel about that? Well, let's see. I'm okay because of my bigger groups here. So I've got this area you can see is Sporobolus. This is, see the Coreopsis? I've got Coreopsis here. So I'm, I'm okay with the larger groups. Then I have it scattered, more scattered through here, 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 
in here. So now I have this area to finish. So I think what I'm going to do is take the Calaminta through here and then finish it off with Cesslaria. So it, the Calaminta will be a little higher than the Cesslaria. It'll taper down to the Cesslaria here. Okay. So part of my brain, that little man that's in my head that you all have running around creating chaos and tr confusing us all through the day, that little man is saying, oh, thank God, Roy, we're done. But I'm not done because the other little man in my head is saying, review this, Roy. Be patient. Don't, don't, you, you don't have to rush to get something done. You want to review it, look at it, and, and kind of take an inventory. How does it flow? How does it feel musically? Do I have a rhythm going here, or do I have too much choppiness? And I always remember that word choppy, because in 2001, when I first met Pete Outoff, he came to Northwind Perennial Farm. He said, Roy, your patterns are really good, but you're too choppy. I'll never forget that. That was such a wonderful thing that he expressed to me. And what I like about Pete, too, he wasn't afraid to say anything. Some people would, oh, I don't want to say anything and hurt anybody's feelings. Right away. Your patterns are good, Roy, but you're too choppy. So I, when I review it, I look, am I too choppy? How do I, where's my flow? I got the uh, stakies here. Okay, I'm good with stakies. I've got stakies here. Okay, I got nice groups of stakies. I've got the Cesslaria flowing through here. I've got Coreopsis, Coreopsis, Echinacea. And when I look over here, I've got uh, Salvia. Okay, I have them drift. Islands within the Echinacea. I've got the larger groups of Sprobulus again, soft textured grass, so it keeps a nice soft texture. And I finish up on this last 100 square feet with bigger blocks. So it, it transitions from fluid islands within a river to larger block plantings. It's not that large, but bigger than what I've used before. And I'm looking, well, you know what? I'm okay with it. Calaminta, I got Calaminta here, I got it here, separated by taller plants. So you don't see right through these plants. You will with the Sprobulus, and when it blooms, it'll be like looking through a screen door. The flowering stems are kind of, you can see through them. So you'll pick up the Calaminta on both sides. Okay, I like that too. So I'm, I'm after reviewing it, you know, I'm pretty happy about it. I got the wall of Vernonia here. I got Parthenium in between there. That'll be a nice white flower starting in mid to late June on top of the dark green fine cut foliage of the Vernonia. Uh, this is all working out well. And if there was something I wasn't comfortable with, I just erase it and add a new element. And what you could do, I could add a new element that maybe wasn't on my list, but it fits the pattern I'm doing. So I'm not locked into that list. That was just a list put together for the exercise to get the thought process going. But I, I could change something in there and who knows, maybe I wanted to use a, a Verona Castrum. Or maybe I wanted to mix maybe some purple cone flowers in with the white cone flower to have a Monet moment. Oh, why not? See, there's, there's no rules that you can't alter and change as long as the plants fit together structurally and can live into each other and have a healthy outcome year after year. And as the cultural gardener, when you're hoeing in the spring, you interpret the relationships, you see what you have to change and at what time frame it needs changing. It might be, I need to prune something or move something. I can do that next year because you're solely going through the garden, watching and looking at all the relationships taking place. So I just wanted to follow up with that earlier show and don't be inhibited by worrying about erasing. It's, it's okay. You're not making a mistake. You're actually building yourself and building your, your knowledge and awareness and your coming to know moments into something healthier. And I tell you, if you, if you practice this, this is the best part. In three to four years, maybe two years, probably three to four years, you're going to be unstoppable. And there's a lot of people who won't want to talk to you because they have no idea or understand the knowledge you have and, and the fun you're having 
putting composition and creating plantings. So why not be unstoppable? Just move ahead and find joy and happiness, and that, but share it with others about what's, what you're doing. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you at the next show. Bye, everybody.